Greetings and welcome to Through the Cross with Father Paul and to our ninth episode of our Fall Novena in honor of St. Joseph. Today we will consider St. Joseph under his title, Earthly Father of Jesus. Before we begin today's reflection, let us pause for a moment of prayer, asking the spirit of St. Joseph to be with us. And let us pray. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Now, to be honest, I am probably the last person who should be sitting here talking about what it means to be a father. Being a passionist and a priest, I have never physically been part of bringing life into the world. I have never had the responsibility of being a father to anyone. I am referred to as father. The title father often precedes my name, but I have never seen myself as a father. On Father's Day, people will often wish me Happy Father's Day, and I usually say thank you but I just do not see myself as a father who should celebrate that day. I know some will say that I am a spiritual father, but I believe fatherhood, being a father, is something special, important, and far different than who I am and what I am called to be in life. I see myself more as a servant, a guide, a disciple, a preacher, a shepherd, in a different sort of a way. So beginning a reflection on St. Joseph, earthly father of Jesus, makes me a little nervous. Perhaps for me, the best place to start is with my own father. I was privileged and honored to preach my dad's funeral mass. I was not a priest yet, just a first-year theology student. But the pastor of my mother and father's parish was kind enough to let me preach the homily at the funeral mass. I ended the homily with a poem I had learned in eighth grade. The poem is entitled, If, and it's by Rudyard Kipling. Here's the poem. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. If you can wait and not be tired by waiting, or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating, and yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream and not make dreams your master. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. If you can bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things you gave your life to broken and stoop and build them up with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it on a turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and nerve and sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone 
and so hold on when there is nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue, or walk with kings nor lose the common touch, if neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distance run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a man, my son. This poem has always spoken to me about life but also about what my own father taught me. In the daily living of my life, my father was a companion who guided, directed, disciplined, challenged, taught, protected, helped, and loved me into the man that I am today. He was often the wisdom figure I went to for advice. He was the example that I always had in front of me concerning life and faith. He, along with many others, guided me along the path of life each day. I hoped I would make the right choices and decisions that would enable me to be the best person that I could be. When I think of St. Joseph as the earthy father of Jesus, I don't just think of him as a stand-in for God the Father. I think of St. Joseph as an earthly father, just like my own dad. Someone who guided, directed, disciplined, challenged, taught, protected, helped and loved Jesus into the man that he became. We often refer to St. Joseph as the foster father of Jesus. But I prefer the earthly father of Jesus because St. Joseph was there from the very start of Jesus' earthly journey. The image of a foster father is often one of a person coming into a person's life because they have lost their biological, their real father for some reason. But that for me is not St. Joseph. He is not stepping in for God the Father. He is living out the duties and responsibilities of fatherhood in the life of Jesus from the very first breath that Jesus took in the world. As Luke tells us in his gospel, Joseph was there as father at Jesus' birth, at his circumcision, at his presentation. Matthew's gospel reminds us that Joseph has a strong role as father. Not only does he, as the child's legal father, give Jesus the right to be called a descendant of David, but Joseph protects the child and his mother, especially in the early years of family life. However, if we just make St. Joseph the kind of father who only carries out his duties, then we miss a whole other side of him. St. Joseph was a companion and a guide in the early life of Jesus. And I believe he was the ever-present spirit of wisdom and love, especially in Jesus' public ministry. Jesus, while being the Son of God, was known throughout his earthly life as the carpenter's son, as Joseph's son. Just like I did with my own father, I believe Jesus acquired some of Joseph's traits, perhaps his walk, his gestures, his expressions of speech, his compassion, and his love for others. Joseph taught Jesus about the people of Nazareth, their sorrows, their joys, their hopes, their fears. Joseph's love and care for Mary and others perhaps became a lasting image in Jesus' life. Standing beside Joseph, Jesus learned how to use the carpenter tools, 
The rabbi said, a father who does not teach his son a trade teaches him to steal. Jesus learned the hard and steady work of the carpenter's trade. We sense that Joseph and Jesus were constant members of Nazareth's synagogue faith community. Together with Mary, they celebrated regularly the great Jewish feasts, listened to the scriptures, and journeyed as pilgrims to Jerusalem. More than anything else, Jesus saw in Joseph his earthly father as a simple, just, compassionate, holy man who trusted God with all his heart. We might say that St. Joseph was the unassuming, steady, quiet man of faith, always attentive to others and God. In the words of Matthew's Gospel, St. Joseph is that treasure buried in a field, which a person finds and hides again, and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Yes, I see St. Joseph as a hidden treasure for Jesus, for Mary, and for us. One of the old traditions about St. Joseph says that Joseph died when Jesus was 19. Now, there is no evidence to back this up, but we do know that Joseph was not present during Jesus' public ministry. If we consider this early tradition, then it is likely Mary and Jesus were with Joseph as he made his last journey of life. The tradition says Joseph died a happy death. And how could it be any other way? For he served God without question, doing God's work until the end. And Jesus and Mary were at his side. Joseph has a special place in all our lives as the earthly father of Jesus. Perhaps like our own fathers, he is the go-to guy when we need to find the right path in life. So let us now seek God through our litany of St. Joseph, calling his quiet fatherly presence, his compassion, his guidance, and his love into our lives. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, our God, have mercy on us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, Pray for us. renowned offspring of David, Pray for us. light of the patriarchs, Pray for us. spouse of the Mother of God, Pray for us. chaste guardian of the Virgin, Pray for us. earthly father of the Son of God, Pray for us. diligent protector of Christ, Pray for us. head of the Holy Family, Pray for us. Joseph, most just. Pray for us. Joseph, most chaste. Pray for us. Joseph, most prudent. Pray for us. Joseph, most strong. Pray for us. Joseph, most obedient. Pray for us. Joseph, most faithful. Pray for us. Mirror of patience. Pray for us. Lover of poverty. Pray for us. Model of artisans. Pray for us. Glory of home life. Pray for us. Guardian of virgins. Pray for us. Pillar of families. Pray for us. Solace of the heartbroken. Pray for us. Hope of the sick. Pray for us. Patron of the dying. Pray for us. Defender from evil. Pray for us. Seeker of truth. Pray for us. Seeker of peace. Pray for us. Protector of Holy Church. Pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. 
Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, let us pray. O God, who in your unspeakable providence, you chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of blessed Mary, the holy mother of your son, Jesus. Grant, we beseech you, that we may deserve to have good Saint Joseph as our intercessor in heaven, whom we reverence as our protector, guide, and father on earth. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May our good and gracious God, through the intercession of Saint Joseph, bless us today and always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining me in prayer and reflection today. Our time together next week will consider Saint Joseph's title, Patron of the Universal Church. Remember, you can watch our series of Through the Cross with Father Paul in honor of Saint Joseph anytime, either on our website or on our YouTube channel. We welcome your thoughts and comments. You can email us at ttc at cpprov.org. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Again, thanks for being with us today. And until next time, in the spirit of St. Joseph, have a great week, everyone. And may the passion of Jesus Christ be always in your heart.